Hello everybody, uh, I'm Arvind Venkatesan. I'm a senior data scientist, part of the literature service group at the EBI. Firstly, I would like to thank uh, the organizers for giving me an opportunity to share our work on bringing uh, the power of text mining uh, to the largest scientific community using the uh, EuroPMC annotations platform. Before I speak about the platform, I would like to give a co some context to it. So, uh, EuroPMC is a freely available, uh, uh, a free uh, digital archive for biomedical and life science uh, research publications. Uh, we host uh, data from abstracts, full, full text articles, preprints, patents, and also agricultural records. So uh, we are a partner with the uh, PubMed, PubMed Central USA, where we share content between us. And, uh, but the only difference is the range of uh, content and the services that we provide. Generally, uh, what we do is we try and uh, uh, our services are reflective of the complexity of uh, the article itself, because uh, an art a research article is not just a written report. There are different layers to it. For example, there, there is the uh, research findings, author affiliations, funding uh, information, metrics on the paper, and also the biological concepts mentioned in the article and the uh, links to uh, various databases. So our uh, services sort of, we, we try to reflect this and make it easy for uh, users to access this information. Uh, given the complexity of an article, what happens is if you add the tremendous growth uh, in uh, the rate of publication that, we, uh, that is currently available, it is really hard for scientists to assimilate all this information. Uh, for instance, for curators, they have to read the paper and uh, get the uh, get extract the essence out of it and add it to the respective databases. So it is a it is really overwhelming, and um, certainly uh, automation is the key, and text mining is a uh, an important part of it, and that's why we are all here. Uh, but it's not necessary that everybody will have the know-how to run a text mining pipeline or will have the knowledge of a particular uh, text mining tool that is available to use it for, uh, uh, say, a, project, a text mining project uh, is over and the, uh, the outputs of it might not be shared widely. So with this in, uh, uh, in mind, we have established the annotation platform. It's an open platform where we aggregate text mining outputs from various sources and share it with the larger uh, community, scientific community, where they can compute on it or use it for uh, other purposes. So uh, the annotation platform has uh, infrastructure around it that supports it. Uh, if you see uh, a text mining group could uh, share their annotations uh, with us via the submission system it gets integrated to the annotation platform, and then from there we share it via the API. Um, EuroPMC also uses the API to uh, highlight all the annotations mentioned in a given article on the EuroPMC website. So currently, uh, the, uh, the platform is, uh, we have close to a billion annotations that across different annotation types. For example, we have diseases, protein-protein interactions. Uh, although the content is uh, predominantly text mine annotations, we also have curated uh, snippets uh, submitted to us. Uh, for uh, Protein interactions are one of them. And uh, we also mine uh, accession numbers for over uh, 50 different databases. We have gene mutation annotations. And uh, the annotations uh, integrated in the, uh, in the annotation platform are based on the uh, W3C uh, recommended uh, web annotation data model. It's a way to, uh, one way to mix and match annotations coming from different sources. And currently we have eight uh, uh, providers uh, in the production instance. And Three more are uh, currently in the test environment, which will be uh, pushed to the production very soon. So uh, what? how do you uh, submit the data? So as I mentioned, there is an annotation submission system. It's a way to 
uh, for the providers to manage their submissions. We, uh, so it starts off with a provider uh, uh, wanting to uh, share interest with us. We give them a, an account and then the data is validated. Here validation would mean to check if we have all the necessary information from the data and uh, then it is loaded to the uh, annotation platform. And uh, the accounts is generally ma managed totally by the uh, uh, providers. There is no restriction on the frequency per se. Uh, it could be a one-off dump or a monthly uh, update or a daily update even. And uh, if, if someone has sort of have the code, we could also, have, we have a facility to run the code as a black box, for instance, and run it on the European C content. So this is how a typical endpoint looks like. Um, you could also, uh, you have a result section where you update your, uh, I mean, submission section where you update your uh, annotations and the, the results of it are stored in the results directory. Uh, if, if, the, uh, if a provider wishes, they could also submit it via, uh, programmatically and the annotations uh, submission page provides details of how to, to do so. So having submitted, uh, what happens to the data? How can you access it? There are two main uh, ways you can access the data, as I mentioned earlier. One is the API. Uh, the annotations API has currently five uh, different ways to access the data, that is by an article ID, by entity search, or by provider. If you're specifically interested in a provider's content, you can uh, query that, or by, for instance, by section and type. Uh, say I want to know uh, all the um, chemicals mentioned in a specific section, method section, for instance. And um, um, and the other uh, way is uh, via the Silite app um, that is in, that's integrated onto the uh, Europe PMC website, where, for instance, for each uh, for for a particular article, we fetch all the annotations and highlight them on uh, the content. Uh, in this way, you can mix and match annotations coming from different sources. And uh, there's an interactive, uh, it's an interactive user interface where you can click on the uh, specific annotation and it takes you to the corresponding uh, database uh, for the grounded entity. Having sort of set up this infrastructure, of course, the other important aspect is uh, how how useful it is and how we can orient this towards the user base. And for this, naturally, uh, we have uh, selected the curation community because uh, they are power users, they, they look for specific information, and they are very diverse. So as an infrastructure, it will be a, a it sort of, if we can solve the problem, then there will be a trickle-down effect in where the greater, uh, I mean, the, the larger scientific community could uh, could benefit from this. So we sort of had a observation study and a curator survey. Uh, I don't have time to go into the details, but the high level uh, summary would be that they are looking for specific information coming uh, for which, uh, say for instance, species, often they say that you know they, they're not able to find uh, the, the interested protein is there, but they are not able to identify the species that they are working on. And the experimental method seems to be a very popular uh, entity that people want, and um, a way to uh, search specific sections of the article. And uh, another important thing is to integrate a triage, such a triage system to the respective curation workflows. So going forward, uh, what we want to do is to, uh, to, first of all, identify actionable items from this uh, user research project and in parallel engage with the text mining community to sort of extend the annotation landscape because there are different types of annotations that they want. And uh, also uh, we are collaborating with curation groups to use this infrastructure for as a tri uh, triage system where they could uh, sort of query their interested list of uh, annotations or the list of pro uh, uh, articles and then use it to their um, integrated with the curation workflow per se. Uh, 
Um, this is not, certainly not a one group effort. I would like to thank all the collaborators and Alexia partners for helping us set up this or give content to this, uh, to provide content to the infrastructure. And um, I would like to just leave the last slide. Please share your annotations with us or use our APIs. Give us uh, your feedback, how we can improve it. And uh, I also have a, dom uh, a demo tomorrow. Please uh, do visit the EBI stand and uh, we can, I can show more about, uh, I can talk more about the uh, infrastructure. Thank you. Time for question. One quick question. Anyone? So from a text miner's perspective, it's obviously always work to set up things to work with a new API. Mm -hmm. So could you give an idea what's the kind of user base that people would actually reach by doing that work? I mean, sort of as the motivation for so, it being uh, worthwhile, so, right? So for instance, um, we, we, Euro PMC has a different, uh, has a wide uh, user base, and it ranges from bioinformaticians accessing our data and uh, uh, curators using the data. So the benefit is that the, the output will add value to their, uh, to the whole uh, uh, community. And this was uh, sort of, uh, there was this um, European um, project called Westlife Project where um, the text miners used our API, the annotations API, in order to, uh, to uh, mine specific residues based on already existing uh, data from the API. So that's one example. All right, thank you again. So now, um, <laughs> last, certainly not the least, uh, we'll have uh, Rao Roy. talking about a new approach and go to standard towards author disambiguation in Medline.